In the last video, we walked through the structure of Superpowers projects through the 2D platformer template. First, we looked at all of the assets provided in the template, and then we looked at the scene which applies all of those assets. In this video, we'll look at the one asset we ignored in the last video, the script. Before we begin, I want to clarify something from the previous video that will be important moving forward. This is a script. It is an asset that stores text which is compiled as TypeScript. This segment of the code within the script is a behavior, which is the thing that can be associated with an actor as a component. Counterintuitively, the one script in this project is actually named behavior, just to make it confusing. So, for future reference, script refers to the physical text file we're reading, and behavior refers to the thing the code represents. Let's take a look at the script, one line at a time. At the very top, before the behavior definition, there's this one line, arcade physics set gravity, with the parameters 0 and negative 0.02. This tells the engine to assign the gravity constant to a vector pointed down with a magnitude of negative 0.02. What that means is that every movable arcade body's velocity will increase by this much every frame. In the case of this template, that only applies to the player but it would also apply to any enemies or items we might add later. It's worth noting that since this happens in the white space outside any class definition, this line could have been placed in a number of places, such as the end of this script, or in another script entirely. Class player behavior extends sup behavior. This tells superpowers that we want a new class, a template for a new kind of object, and we want that object to do all the things that a behavior can do. This alone won't be enough to let superpowers add our behavior to an actor. However, with the additional line at the bottom that registers the behavior, it is. So with just these two lines at the top and the bottom, we can already add this behavior to our game. It won't do anything, but we can add it. The class has two fields, speed and jump speed. These names should be familiar since we saw them earlier when we were looking at the scene. Since these fields are not specified to be private or protected, they are considered public, meaning among other things that each instance of this behavior can be edited from the scene. The next thing we see is this update function. Subbehavior's update is automatically run approximately 60 times a second. So this is where all of our game logic happens. First, we tell superpowers that we want the player and the level to collide. Actually, more specifically, we tell superpowers we want the player and all arcade bodies to collide. If the only code we had was the code we talked about so far, you'd observe that the player would fall down at the rate of the gravity constant until they hit the level, in which case they would stop. Next, we set aside a variable called velocity, initializing it with the player's current velocity, as you might expect, which is pulled from the arcade body. Note that any changes made to the velocity variable will not affect the player's velocity unless we feed it back in later. Also note that we can access velocity.x and velocity.y because velocity is a vector too, which is an object that stores, among other things, an x and a y. Now we start evaluating the user input. If the left arrow key is pressed, we assign velocity's x to negative of the speed field. While we're at it, we flip this right around so the player will face left. When evaluating if the right arrow key is pressed, and if the left arrow key is not pressed, we do the opposite. Velocity.x is set to speed, and we unflip the sprite. Finally, if neither left nor right are pressed, we set velocity.x to zero. At this point, providing we feed the velocity back in at some point, the player can move left and right. But we're missing the key feature of a platformer, jumping. In order to jump, we need to evaluate whether or not we're touching the ground. To evaluate this, we call the actor's arcade body's getTouches function. And then from there, we grab the bottom field. For the sake of clarity, we set aside this variable called touchBottom. This is a Boolean variable that is true if the arcade body is colliding with something on its bottom side. Next, we evaluate if touchBottom is true. Since it's already a Boolean, we don't need to say if touchBottom is equal to true, we can just say if touchBottom. Once we know for sure that we're on the ground, we check to see if the up arrow key is pressed. If that's the case, we set velocity y to jump speed. And while we're at it, we set the sprite render's animation to the jumping animation. Speaking of animations, we have a few more we want to use. And checking to see if we're on the ground or not is a good way to decide which animations we should use. Once we've settled that we're touching the ground, 
we check to see if velocity.x is equal to zero, meaning that we are not moving horizontally. If we're not moving horizontally, then we set the animation to idle, meaning that we're standing still. If velocity.x is not equal to zero, meaning that we are moving horizontally, we set the animation to run. Now, if touch bottom is not true, meaning we're not touching the ground, we want to evaluate if we should be using the jump or fall animation. The way we decide this is that if velocity.y is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that we're traveling up, we set the animation to jump. And if velocity.y is not greater than or equal to zero, meaning it is less than zero, we set the animation to fall. Finally, we assign the velocity to the arcade body's velocity. This is that feeding the velocity back in I kept mentioning earlier. If we didn't do this, then all of the changes that we've made to velocity would have been pointless because that vector wouldn't be used anywhere. In summary, we tell the game to collide two actors, copy down the velocity, mess with it based on user input, and set the animation based on the velocity and whether or not the player is touching the ground. We also assign the upward velocity to a certain value if the jump button is pressed. And then we feed that morphed velocity back into the body. That concludes the 2D platformer template. There's not a lot to it, but hopefully these two videos give you a good understanding of how superpowers projects are structured and how TypeScript works in superpowers. I hope I have facilitated a good starting off point for your own game development endeavors.